Hey, how's it guys? In this tutorial, we'll learn how to execute Google BigQuery SQL Query using BigQuery API in Python. Alright, so let's look at the uh, SQL Query that I'll be uh, using to uh, run the SQL report. So here in my uh, Google BigQuery console, I have this SQL statement here. If I run the uh, SQL statement, it's going to return uh, four counts with 89 rows. Now let me go into my Python script and increase the font size. Here I already uh, wrote the uh, code block to construct my Google BigQuery uh, client instance. And if you've never used a uh, Google BigQuery API before, you can watch the uh, tutorial on how to get started with uh, BigQuery API from the link in the description below. So to use BigQuery API to uh, run a SQL query from the client object, want to reference the uh, query function. And basically the query function, like the name represents, it allows you to pass your SQL statement and to run the SQL query. All right, so here let me uh, copy paste the uh, SQL statement over. I'm actually going to uh, create a variable to store the SQL statement. And I'm in the variable uh, SQL. All right, so inside the uh, query method, want to pass the SQL query. And based on your uh, table's location, the default is set to uh, US. So here I'm going to explicitly uh, specify the location uh, just for demonstration. And mine is going to be US, and which is going to be the default. And we can also uh, specify some other settings, such as uh, what's the maximum uh, process uh, power that you want to allow this query to process. So for example, uh, there's a parameter called job config. I want to uh, reference the BigQuery that query job configuration class. Inside the uh, query job config class, we can set the maximum bytes build. And I want to set the limit on um, uh, the maximum uh, bytes the query can process. And I'm going to set this to uh, 50 megabytes. So when you run the uh, query method, it doesn't actually uh, return the records uh, directly. The query method actually creates a job first. And for the output, it's going to return a job ID. And if I want to assign a unique uh, identification or a nickname to the job that the query method creates, we can use the job ID uh, prefix uh, parameter to give our job a nickname. I'm going to uh, provide a nickname called uh, job high quality poses. So if we look at the uh, SQL statement, so if you have a condition, I want to uh, from my from my uh, this uh, BigQuery table, which is a, a table that contains uh, different related poses. And I want to uh, use these two conditions to uh, return high quality poses. And I'm going to name my uh, job ID, uh, job high quality poses. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to provide to uh, run the query. And I'll name the output as query underscore job. All right, so if I go ahead and uh, run this code block to uh, execute the query. Oh, actually, I forgot to uh, create my client instance first. Now, if I run my uh, query method, now here, if I uh, print the query job object, it's going to uh, return a query job uh, name tuple. Actually, I don't think this is a name tuple. Uh, let me check. All right, so it's going to return as a query job object. So from the query job uh, object, the object contains the uh, project ID the query location, and the jobs ID. So if we look at the uh, jobs ID, and here's the uh, identification that we assign it to the query job, followed by the job ID. All right, so if we want to uh, retrieve the values, so from uh, this query, we have 89 records returned. So there are two ways we can uh, return the values or the records. So the first method is, here let me insert notes, Method one to retrieve records. So from the uh, query job object, we want to uh, reference the results method. Actually, I think it's going to be a singular result. Let me take a look. Okay. 
So if I run the result method, it's going to return as a table row iterator object. So that means uh, we can insert a loop to uh, iterate this uh, row iterator object to return the values. So for example, I can say for row, encourage up that result, and I can print each row object individually. So if I run the uh, loop, All right, so it's going to uh, return its record as a, a row name tuple. Now there are uh, two approaches or two methods we can return the um, values. The first method is uh, referencing the count index. We shall now get uh, each individual count value from uh, each row object here. And the other method is by referencing the, the attribute name, and which is going to be the count name. So here we have title. And if I run this loop again, and it's going to return the exact same output. And for the second method, we can actually uh, construct a data frame object. And if that's something that you prefer, and if the data size is not too large, and so it's going to be to data frame. And this one's going to be a loop. If we want to return the uh, result set as a data frame object, we want to reference the query jar object that to data frame. And I'll name the output as DF. If I print the uh, DF object here, and if I print DF, it's going to return the output as a data frame object. And at this point, you can do uh, any uh, manipulation based on your requirements, or you can uh, export the table into different file format. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.